occlusal vertical dimension is the distance between the maxilla and mandible when denture teeth or wax rims are in contact. It can affect the patient's appearance. This patient doesn't have enough vertical dimension and his lips don't show when he closes. Inadequate occlusal vertical dimension can lead to sagging corners of the mouth, insufficient lip support. Here the patient closes till he's at rest, but when he closes all the way, you notice the difference. At rest, the nasal label angle should be 90 degrees. If the patient closes further, you'll notice the angle becomes acute. Because the patient's denture won't fit on the master cast, we use a record base and wax rim to determine the occlusal vertical dimension. Before we begin to adjust the rims and determine our vertical dimension, we'll actually take the patient's existing dentures, take a look at what type of support and what height the patient has with those dentures. You should be able to see the denture teeth just at the edge of the lip. This patient doesn't have sufficient support or length of the teeth. So we'll make those determinations before we begin using the wax rims. Before beginning with your wax rims intraorally, you should check to make sure some basic criteria are met. First of all, in the maxillary arch, there should be an angle to your rim so that there's a little bit of proclination. You can use the 2 byte auto rule to check that angulation. It's usually around 80 degrees. The height of the rim in the anterior region in the maxillary arch should start out so that it's about 22 millimeters in height. There are some marks on the 2 byte ruler that will show whether that's approximately correct. That's just a guideline for starting. Also in the anterior region, you should have a width of the rim that's about 7 millimeters in, in uh, width. That's a little wider than the teeth will be, but we want something nice and wide and broad uh, so that we get a good solid record. You need to tell the patient that the denture teeth will not feel that bulky. In the posterior region, the width of the rim should be approximately 10 millimeters in the maxa and in the mandible. The mandibular rim should also be slightly angled. Uh, or proclined in the anterior region, but the height of the rim should only need to be about 18 millimeters. Again, that's just a general guideline. When we place the maxillary rim interorally, we expect to see a couple of things. First of all, the incisal edge of the rim should fall 1 to 2 millimeters below the upper lip when the patient is at rest. When the patient says the fricative sounds, the F's and the V's, the edge of the rim should just touch the wet line of the lower lip. When you're looking directly at the patient and you can see the rim just below the lip, the angle of the occlusal plane on the rim should be parallel to the patient's interpupillary line. At rest, the occlusal plane of the mandibular rim should be at the level of the corners of the patient's mouth. Posteriorly, the edge of the occlusal plane should intersect somewhere around halfway up the retromolar pad. If this occlusal plane is too low, the patient's tongue will lap over the top and the patient will accidentally chew their tongue. If the occlusal plane is placed too high, then the patient will find that they have a struggle as their tongue has to move up higher to replace the bolus of food on top of the occlusal table during chewing. The patient will fatigue and will report a sore tongue. Here we're marking halfway up the retromolar pad and transferring it onto the land area. We'll reseat the wax rim on the cast and use an instrument such as a pen or a ruler to make sure it lines up. To make measurements of the occlusal vertical dimension, put very discrete dots on the patient's chin and on the tip of their nose in order to use your Bowley gauge to make the measurements of both physiologic rest and the occlusal vertical dimension. For all measurements of occlusal vertical dimension, Make sure the patient is not laying down like you see it here. The patient should be upright. Insert the maxillary record base and wax rim and check for lip support in profile and also for the length of the incisal edge. This rim is a little bit too short and doesn't provide sufficient uh, lip support. Therefore, we'll probably add some wax to both the facial and the occlusal surface. Use a Bunsen burner or a butane torch to soften the, the base plate wax you're going to add. It should be soft enough that it's drooping on its own weight. Heat your knife if you need to cut strips of it to add onto the surface. Addition of wax onto the record base should be relatively quick. You want to soften the wax on the existing rim and also soften the wax you're adding so they stick to each other. You don't want to get air pockets or spaces where that wax does not stick to itself 
or when you're cutting into it to adjust it, you'll find that it falls apart. So soften each piece that you're applying. Here we've ad added to the facial surface. We're folding it over a little bit onto the occlusal surfaces. Again, making sure that it's well softened. Then we're going to soften some more material and add it again onto the occlusal surface to increase the height of the ridge and also the incisal display that we see from the wax rim. These procedures should happen very quickly. It should not take more than 10 to 15 minutes to add the wax onto the rim that you already have. Use your knife heated so that it cuts very efficiently so you don't have to use force and it's a good idea to use a finger rest to make sure that you don't cut yourself. If you need to add quite a bit of extra wax, soften your wax, cut it, roll it up so you have a larger thickness of wax to add on. Make sure that the wax is dead soft. Use your alcohol torch or Hanno torch or your Bunsen burner. Then roll it up so it's several thicknesses thick. Soften the wax. Then place it on the rim. In this particular case, we're adding even some more wax onto the occlusal surface. While it's still dead soft, push it and mold it with your fingers. Get it to the height that you want and make sure that it's well adapted to the rim. Use your alcohol torch or your butane torch to soften and melt and adjust it so that it sticks to the existing. Then use a wax former to adjust and shape. Get a flat surface using that heated aluminum paddle. Use a heated number seven wax spatula to seal any wax that's been added to the wax rim to make sure that it's joined well and won't come apart when you're making some of the adjustments to your wax rim. Once you've sealed that to the wax rim, you can heat up the wax former using either a Bunsen burner or a butane torch. Don't try and use your Hanno alcohol torch. It's not hot enough. Then use the side of the wax former to get a nice flat surface to both the buckle surface of the rim and also to flatten the occlusal surface so that when you're making your occlusal records you have a nice flat surface both on the maxillary and the mandibular rim. When you have the vertical dimension and the lip support correct, the incisal edge of the rim should just be below the incisal edge and the nasolabial angle should be about 90 degrees. When you use your, your fingers on the lip it shouldn't feel strained or collapsed. This maxillary rim is adjusted so it's just about at the perfect spot. Notice the edge of the rim just showing below that lip at rest. A flox plane is an instrument that can be used placed against the occlusal plane to ensure that it is parallel both the ala tragus line from the ala of the nose to the tragus of the ear and also parallel the interpupillary uh, line. You may find that taking a patient's glasses off makes it easier to check to make sure that that plane is parallel the interpupillary line. The mandibular rim should be adjusted using the same techniques but remember it should be at the level of the corners of the mouth and intersect halfway up the retromolar pad. When using the wax former to melt and adjust the rims, remember to hold the rim in such a way that any melted wax drips away from the record base so you don't get it on the tissue surface and cause it to be unseated when you place it into orally. Once you've adjusted both the maxillary and mandibular rims independently, place them in the patient's mouth together and check to make sure there's contact throughout the rim. Here there's a gap between the maxillary and mandibular rim in the posterior regions. Check that and adjust those as necessary. Check your occlusal vertical dimension to decide whether to add some wax onto the rim or to take away some excess contact that might be increasing the occlusal vertical dimension. Have your patient close until their lips just barely touch. That's the physiologic rest position. Then have the patient close all the way till their teeth touch. That's your occlusal vertical dimension. The difference between those two measurements should be two to four millimeters. Adjust your rims until you see that two to four millimeters. Use phonetics tests to check for proper position of the rims and occlusal vertical dimension.
we'll use the fricative sounds, Fs and Vs, to check the upper rim edge against the lower lip. We'll use the S sounds for closest speaking space for occlusal vertical dimension, and MMMMM to check the rest position. 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. Count from 50. 50, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Okay. Can you say M M M M M really quickly? Go M M M M M M M M M M. Lastly, check the proper relationship of your rims and the absence of interferences between the record bases by using some articulating paper. You can have the patient tap together, take the rims and the uh, record bases out of the mouth, and check to make sure that the record bases aren't hitting at the back. If you've got a heavy contact it will look like this. You'll see the mark at the end of the base. Another technique is to place three widely separated marks between both the maxillary and mandibular rims. Make sure that they're widely separated and make sure you have three marks. Here we'll add the third one in the anterior region. Make sure that that mark is clearly visible between the maxillary and mandibular rims. When you remove the rims from the patient's mouth, and you align those three widely separated marks, you will find that there is only one place where you can get all three of the marks so that they line up. Watch for interferences such as you see back here. You can see the record bases actually hitting the rim and keeping the rims from touching together. That's extremely critical. The other thing to watch out for is this type of rim in the maxillary arch where the rim's been taken back too far. This rim should stop about here. That way when the patient comes into protrusion, they won't hit and, and encounter an interference with this maxillary record base against the rim. When you are finished adjusting your rims interorally, you should see that there is nice even contact all the way around the rim. You should also make sure that you have about two millimeters of overjet all the way around the rim. If there is insufficient overjet, the patient may bite their cheeks. The rims that you have adjusted interorally will provide support for the lips and the cheeks. It will provide the laboratory technician some orientation for where the buccal surface of the teeth should be since they will not get to see the patient when they're setting the denture teeth. It is important therefore that the buccal surfaces of the rim are where you want the buccal surfaces of the teeth. Additionally it's really critical that the occlusal rims fit flush together from side to side that there is no discrepancies and lastly, the patient should have a proper vertical dimension so the distance between physiologic rest and occlusal vertical dimension, which is basically your interocclusal distance, should be 2 to 4 millimeters. After all of these are completed, you should be ready to make your centric jaw relation.